Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at some of the basic theorems. There's a whole bunch of them, and so we'll start, we'll snip them up into, into groups, and so the first theorem is this, that if A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of C, then A must be a subset of C. Now here for an example, we have three um, events, A, B, and C. A has the outcomes 1 and 2, B has the outcomes 1, 2, and 3, and C has the outcomes 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can see that all of the outcomes in A are also in B, so therefore A is indeed a subset of B. And here you can see that all the outcomes in B are also found in C, so therefore B is a subset of C. And if that's true, then A must be a subset of C, and notice that 1 and 2, the two outcomes of A, are also in C, so therefore we know that A must be a subset of C. So we can see that that's true. Now for the next four theories, 2 through 5, we are going to then use these right here as examples. And maybe I need to give myself a little more room to work. All right, so next we can see that A union B must equal B union A. So what does that mean, A union B? That means all of the, L, all of the outcomes in A plus all of the outcomes in B plus all the outcomes that are in both A and B. So we can see here that 1 and 2, those are the outcomes in A. 2 and 3 are the outcomes in B, and 2 and, and two is the outcome in both A and B. So combined, on the left side, we should then get, I'll write over here, then we can see that 1, 2, 3 are all the outcomes in A union B. Now if you reverse it, you say B union A, then you can start with B, and say, well, all the outcomes in B are 2 and 3, all the outcomes in A are 1 and 2, so you take all 2 and 3, and 1 and 2 combine them, again you get 1, 2, and 3, so it doesn't matter what order you take, and so therefore this is equal to 1, 2, and 3. All right, the next three. Here, if we start grouping them together, A union with the union of B and C should be equal to A union B, when you do that first, union C, or A union B union C all at the same time. What does union mean? Well, you group them all together, right? So whatever you find in B, and you find in C, you group them together. So here we have B, 2 and 3, C, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when we take union B and C, you have all the outcomes 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then if you then do, then you take A union that, so again, all the outcomes in 1 and 2 could also be found in the union of B and C, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see that it doesn't matter which way you group them together, you're always going to get all of them together. So in this case, this is going to be equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it doesn't matter in which order you start combining them. Here we see that A intersection B is claimed to be equal to B intersection A. What does A intersection B mean? All the outcomes that belong to both A and B at the same time. So here we see that between A and B, the number or the outcome 2 is common, so therefore A intersection B is indeed 2. So we can say on the left side that would be equal to 2, and then it doesn't really matter if you write A intersection B or you write B intersection A. So if you look at B and then look for all the elements or all the outcomes in A that are common and you see that 2 is common, and you simply say, well, doesn't matter in which order you look at that, if you look for all the outcomes that are common between two events, you always will pick the same one. Then here you can say that, again, it doesn't matter which order you take it, A union, the union B, uh, I shouldn't say union, but the A intersection, and B intersection C, let's take a look. What is B intersection C? Notice we have 2 and 3 in B, we have 2 and 3 in C, so the intersection of B and C is 2 and 3. So let's write that down. So this would be A intersection, and B intersection C is simply the outcomes 2 and 3. Now we're going to do A intersection that. Now remember, A is equal to 1 and 2, those outcomes, 1 and 2 are the outcomes, so now we're looking for the intersection of 1, 2, and 2, 3, and notice the outcome will then be simply, this is equal to simply the outcome 2, which means that if you write it like this, the answer is the outcome that is common to all 3, A, B, and C, and again it doesn't matter in what order you find the uh, intersection, if you do it like this or you do it like that, it's simply going to be all the outcomes that are common with all of them. And if you look here, 
You see that not only the outcome 2 is common with all three events, so therefore the solution, no matter how you write it, will be equal to this. And those are the first five basic theorems. Next video, we'll do the next set.